morning. I'm Kingsley Meyer, uh, Director of Campus Computing and Networking here at the University of Rio Grande, and I welcome everybody today for this uh, forum. Um, my life has sure changed over the years that I've been here at Rio Grande. I went from uh, working in the out of doors and with environmental education to now being responsible for our campus network. And it's been my pleasure to learn most of what I know on the job. Uh, because as Dr. Johnston pointed out, 20 years or so ago, <coughs> we didn't have all the challenges that we have today. And our environment is constantly changing. Uh, for us, as citizens here in Gallia County and uh, uh, local residents, we interact not only with our family across the internet, but we interact an awful lot with our banking institutions, our insurance companies, and such. It gives me great pleasure to introduce a person that has my banking information secured. <laughs> Gabe Stewart's a graduate of Royal Grand. He has a long list of three-letter and, and five-letter acronyms that all relate to his security certifications. Much of what Gabe has learned and his responsibilities have come from the federal regulations that hold him responsible on behalf of the banking industry to keep our information and the, our monetary system safe. He has uh, supported and uh, sponsored forums uh, through our Gallia County uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Ohio Valley Bank and Farmers, and I know he will be having some more coming up to uh, deal with, with mobility and some uh, new issues that we'd like to uh, focus on a little bit more closely. So if you will, please make Gabe welcome. Well, good morning. Um, I think it's still morning. Um, I will apologize first off for my voice. I've spent way too much time at wrestling tournaments lately. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I am Gabe Stewart. I am the CISO at the Ohio Valley Bank. I've been in banking for 19 years now, the last 13 of which have been in IT security. Cybersecurity, that is the topic for the day. And the big question comes up is what is cyber? Everything you hear right now is cyber this, cyber that, cyber threats, cyber attacks, cyber security. Is it just another buzzword or is it a serious concern? It's both. At the end of the day, cybersecurity has always existed, cyber threats have always existed. Since the first Nigerian Prince email happened, I recall around 97, that's been there. We need to know how to act and how to behave around these. I've since heard that the Nigerian prince is now a Nigerian astronaut trapped in space, and he needs money to get back off the International Space Station. <clears throat> but data security, information security has existed as long as the internet's been around. We just have a new thing that we're supposed to care more about. The big deal is our exposure factor. And as Dr. Johnson alluded to, it's the internet of things. Everything is connected these days. If it, if it is connected, it can be hacked. <clears throat> Some of the things that we have that are now connected, phones have been for a while. I still remember my days of a Palm Pilot that I just kept my notes on. Medical equipment, recently there's been a proof of concept hack of an x-ray machine that will, they can increase the level of radiation you're exposed to. The Chrysler hack last year proved that a car can be taken over. Steering taken over and acceleration. Houses are now connected. You can lock and unlock, arm and disarm your security systems. And the most amusing one to me, diapers. You can get notified when a diaper needs changed or if there needs to be a dietary change. So the bad guys. There's always been hackers. They're not new. Their skill sets are getting lower and lower because of great tools like Google. Google hacking is a real thing. You can find free tools that will hack most anything. <clears throat> Hacktivists. 
Hacktivists are kind of a new trend. They are people that are hacking for the greater good. There's a group called Anonymous. They've recently shut down the Westboro Baptist Church. They took on Sony, and Sony has paid a few million dollars to clean up the mess. They basically they sent Sony an email saying, hey, your cloud is not secure. Please secure it. Sony ignored it, so they took it down. <clears throat> Hostile nation states, again, not a big deal in the past because they didn't have the technology. The technology is now here. Government-sponsored hackers, people that just quite honestly don't like the United States. Social engineers, these are my favorite guys because they are people that try to get information. They don't care what kind of information they get. They just want information. <clears throat> they will build a dossier on you or your company and use that to try to become you. Try to gain access into your company to sell you stuff, to take over. They, they're the guys that send the phishing emails. They put up the farming websites, the watering hole places, and the ways they get stuff is they will talk to your friends and family, they'll go dumpster diving, they will look for credit card receipts, they will go through your mailbox. And when the Attorney General is talking about the grandparent scheme, a lot of times if they go through your mailbox, they can find out that you have a new member to the family. They call to sell you life insurance for your new child, things like that. <clears throat> and especially when they hit grandparents with it, well sure, life insurance is great, why wouldn't I get it? company doesn't exist. Identity theft, identity theft in 2011 cost Americans roughly 5.2 billion dollars. Ransomware, another new one. You get a pop-up saying you've got an infection, clean it. Natural reaction is click it, let's clean that off, let's get it out of here. It encrypts your hard drive. And then you get an email a few days later saying hey, for $400 I'll decrypt everything. And you do it because it's 400 bucks and it's your family pictures. And they're completely legitimate. They will unlock your pictures. I know people that this happened to. You get it all back, but then they leave something as they're leaving, and a few weeks later, you're encrypted again. So it's another $400. They're extremely successful because it is cheap, but they do it enough times, they make pretty good dollars. Ransomware in 2015 was $325 million. And that was not, that's the reported cases. Most do not get reported because again it's cheap and not worth the time. Denial of service attacks. That is where you get requests that you can't answer. It's like saying hi to somebody in a baseball stadium or saying hi to everybody in a baseball stadium and them all responding to you. You can't, you can't keep up with the traffic. <clears throat> and it's a, that's what happened to Sony. A lot of big companies will get hit with denial of service to take down their service. It costs them big dollars to recover from being out of business for six hours. So what can we do? Well, at the bank, we have layered security. We build a security perimeter and we build layers in. If you think about a castle, there's a moat, there's walls, there's guards before you get to what's important. We do the same thing at the bank. We have intrusion detection systems, intrusion, preven intrusion prevention systems, firewalls. We do a lot of user training. Our IT staff has to go annually to training because every day there's a new cyber threat, there's new vulnerabilities. So what can the everyday person do? You modify your behavior. Passwords are still king. They're not good, but they're the best we've got currently. Multi-factor authentication, biometric authentication is coming. 
but the technology is still not quite there on an affordable level. SNFYI, Master123, Password123, Buckeyes01, these are not good passwords. And I can always tell, I walk into an office, somebody's got a picture of the shoe and a picture of Woody. When we crack passwords, Buckeyes01 is at least 10 passwords. <clears throat> And again, a lot of common sense stuff, things that everybody should know. Keep all your devices and software updated. Those patches, they're annoying. They take time. You've got to reboot. But all software has vulnerabilities. Those patches fix those vulnerabilities. Microsoft has what they call Patch Tuesday. The next day is Vulnerability Wednesday. The hackers have already figured out the holes in it after the patch. Be careful what you put on social media. Social media is a social engineer's dream. People put on there all the time what their exact schedule is, where they're going to be, how long they're going to be there, and what they ate. A lot of times it's an invitation, come break into my house. <clears throat> Use antivirus and anti-malware and keep them updated. Those signatures are updated by the vendors regularly because new malware is coming out. Change your passwords. Well, I apparently don't know how to use a keyboard. be very wary of public Wi-Fi. Just because something says that it's McDonald's free Wi-Fi, I can broadcast that with my phone. And I see all your traffic. Free Wi-Fi is something that I do not trust. I can set up my phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot and I can call it whatever I want. Hotel internet is very suspect to it. There's a device that can be bought for about $300. It's called a pineapple. You can plug it in and broadcast Wi-Fi. You can have three or four different Wi-Fi hotspots to choose from, and it collects all your traffic. <clears throat> when you have your antivirus and anti-malware on your computer, set it up to run a schedule automatically while you're asleep. Don't open attachments and emails that you don't know. Call and verify. I know it seems silly in the age of digital communication to call somebody and say, hey, did you send me an email? But if it looks, if you're not expecting it, verify its validity. Websites, again, good websites have bad content. Home Depot, a while back, they had a fished site and <clears throat> it was a complete clone and it allowed a backdoor into your computer if you clicked on it. And it was their legitimate site. Perform backups. This is something that has always been more of a business concern, but I've started personally doing a backup. I've got a lot of pictures of my kids that I don't want to lose. So I keep a USB drive in a fireproof cabinet at my office that I update every so often. Because in the event of ransomware, we had ransomware at the bank. It was we deleted everything and restored it because we have good backups. You can do the same thing at home. USB drives are not expensive. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Excuse me. You yes, sir. Ransomware, ransomware is a fake antivirus that will pop up and ask you to clean an infection on your computer. Once you say OK to that, it starts encrypting your entire hard drive. And once it encrypts it, then you'll get an email uh, that is legitimate. They will unlock your files. You'll get them all back. But it costs you anywhere from four to $800. How do you get rid of that? Honestly, you go to your backup and you delete everything you've got and restore it is the easiest. 
or you pay them. Now, when you, to get that, the thing comes up and says, hey, you've got a virus, click here to clean it, right? Yes. And you don't, you're not blocked until you click clean, correct? Well, a lot of times yeah. it's anywhere in that box will kick it off. Right, but if, if it pops up, can you just shut down the computer and restart it? And yes. That? Yes, or in the process from your task manager right. is the safe way to get rid of it. <clears throat> I do have time for questions if there are any more. Come on, somebody give me a question. There's got to be one out there somewhere. Well, I think maybe you had it on a slide or somewhere. It just dawned on me that once something's on your computer, it is there. Yes. And it, even though you might have deleted it, it's still there. So these kind of things that you're just talking about, these uh, uh, being held hostage and so forth, you know, I forget the word already. Is that somehow still there? Like is your machine really kind of vulnerable from then on? That's the scary thing with ransomware is a lot of times when they decrypt your files, they will leave another agent on there to come back in in two weeks and start the same process again. So that is that is why I can't stress enough the importance of up-to-date anti-malware and antivirus. My basic rule is if you didn't ask for it, don't click it. Yes. You know, I don't have a antivirus thing that pops up like that. So. Right. And they do a really good job of making it look legitimate. That goes for emails too. Yes. Emails yeah, every year we have penetration tests done at the bank, people trying to hack into our network, and they will do phishing emails, and generally they come from one of our executives, and people are willing to help. That's why social engineering works so well, is because you do have a natural tendency to either stop a problem or help somebody. Dave, there, there's been a lot of controversy about the Apple. Uh, <coughs> uh, the FBI would like the Apple to decrypt. What, what, what is your, what, what is your uh, feeling? I believe that to be a slippery slope. Okay. That if you, if you, if they decrypt it, and I'm not sure that they're able to, depending on what the encryption suite was that was used, I don't know that there is a back door to it. But I think that if you start allowing it in certain cases, then we give up a certain level of privacy and a certain level, level of liberty. I haven't found, the, the question was, are apples inherently more secure, correct? Right. I have not found that to be the case. By and large, the Apple market are people that don't care as much about security. Huh. Um, they have recently got an encryption suite that is compliant with DOD rules. So that is, I'm assuming, what they're trying to break into right now. Or that phone could have been jailbreaked, jailbroken, I guess, um, and another encryption suite put on that Apple is unaware of. I don't think Apple's going to be able to do it even if they wanted to. But Apple has always given you the ability to jailbreak their devices until they wanted to play in government space, and so they developed what is called the FIPS crypto. more and more apps are coming in being uh, 
description. Uh, is that good or bad? Or? Encryption being good, in my world, encryption is always good because I want our data protected. I want your data protected, assuming you bank with us. But <clears throat> the, the problem is getting encryption that can't be cracked. And the government has set an advanced encryption standard that they will allow for use in government entities. And everything that we encrypt is encrypted to that level. We use anomaly detection and we're looking at some other vulnerability management tools. Um, it is, it's pretty good, but the bad guys are always going to be two steps ahead because sadly the IT industry is reactive. Yes, sir. Could you speak for a second about the payment card industry and the ability of our banks to detect fraudulent activity and protect us <coughs> and customers? Payment card industry standards. Um, that is a, stand, a, gr a group of standards that were set for anybody that takes payment cards. And you have to meet certain baseline security criteria. In banking, we have always had anomaly detection for unusual activity, unusual transactions, out of area transactions that will shut the card down if we if it meets our threshold a lot of work has gone into setting rules for if you do a transaction in Georgia and then one five minutes later in South Carolina that it will shut that down yes that is the question was alerting your bank about travel plans. Yes, we've had it happen where people have been where they aren't normally and they do a debit card transaction, the debit card gets shut down. So let your bank know you're traveling. Will those types of communications always be with a customer service person or will we get control of that type of notification through our user log into your web portals? As of right now, the, I, the protocol would be go to a customer service representative and then they would attack, uh, attack um, approach the appropriate person in the bank. Yes? How secure do you think these square card readers stuff are? Is that good? I, I'm not personally a fan just because of the portability of it and I have used them a few times <clears throat> and I've not gotten my receipts and the money still come out so I'm leery of using them but they're here. The, the best advice I would give on that is monitor. Find a credit monitoring service monitor your bank accounts, have, perform due diligence. How long yeah. have you, uh, like earlier, they were talking about the Apple, uh, being able to pay with your uh, Apple Pay, yeah. I know now you, there's scanners out there that you can walk by and they'll actually scan your card in your pocket if you don't know it. How long before they do that to the watch? I, if it isn't happening, it's not far on the horizon. If, if it exists for convenience, people will take advantage of it. So, so literally, you're, you're walking around with your credit card, just walking in hand. Go ahead and take it. Yes. That's what tinfoil is for. Yeah. That, that's, what, that's right. I forgot about that. Tinfoil. <coughs> we have time for about one. 
What keeps you awake at night? The Internet of Things. Currently, that is my my concern because, especially to the millennial generation, privacy is a thing of the past, and everything is out there on social media. Would that mean that you're not going to allow an Amazon Echo in your uh, <laughs> in your home? What is an Amazon Echo? It is a information center. You can ask it anything, and it will tell you. If you like see Alec Baldwin, Baldwin on TV, Alec Baldwin wakes up and says, you know, order me a pair of wool socks. What's the weather? Uh, what happened to me last night? So will I allow it in my house? I haven't got to that bridge yet to burn it. So. there are no more questions, I sincerely appreciate your time today. I appreciate Raya's willingness to let me come and speak, and I thank you. <laughs>